we have to question everything when it comes to building testosterone naturally. And I don't know how many times you've heard this, but one of the biggest repeated lines in fitness is this. If you want to boost testosterone, you need to squat. Now, on the surface, it makes total sense. Squats hit every major muscle group. They demand power, but the question is, do they actually boost your testosterone in a meaningful long-term way? Let's get into it. If you're serious about dialing in your hormone health, make sure you hit that subscribe button. On Testosterone Growth, we're all about science-backed strategies to optimize testosterone naturally. And we drop videos every single week to help you feel stronger, leaner, and sharper. Right, so let's start with the basics. More muscle mass recruited greater anabolic response. That's the theory behind squats and T. They stimulate your legs, core, glutes, back, basically your whole body. So yeah, the anabolic potential is through the roof. But does that actually lead to higher testosterone production? Or is this just one of those fitness myths that refuses to die? In this video, we're diving deep into the science. We'll break it down into three key sections, each backed by legit studies. Here's the game plan. Do free weight squats actually elevate testosterone more than machines? Do squats affect basal testosterone levels, not just short term spikes? And finally, does testosterone even matter when it comes to building muscle? Or are we missing the bigger picture? Let's kick things off with the first section. Free weights versus machines, which triggers more testosterone. The first study was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. It compared free weight squats to the leg press, a classic fixed machine movement. The study took 10 trained subjects and had them perform six sets of 10 reps, either with a barbell squat or a leg press. Pretty straightforward. Researchers measured their testosterone, growth hormone and cortisol levels before and after. And here's what they found. Testosterone was 16.7% higher after squatting with free weights compared to the leg press. Growth hormone also spiked slightly more with the squat group. Cortisol, the stress hormone, rose similarly in both. Now, why does this happen? Well, free squats demand full body stabilization. You're not just pushing through with your legs, you're bracing with your core, engaging your back, gripping the bar and maintaining posture. That's a lot of muscle recruitment. More muscle equals more systemic stress equals more anabolic hormone response. But here's a catch. This was an acute response. Hormones were only measured 15 and 30 minutes post-workout. So yes, squats cause a temporary testosterone spike, but that doesn't necessarily translate into long-term gains in hormone levels. This brings us to section two. Section two, do squats actually increase long-term testosterone? Now we're getting into more important territory, basal testosterone. This isn't the spike you get right after a heavy set. This is your resting testosterone level measured in the morning, usually between 7 and 9 a.m., before food, before caffeine, before training. It's a clean look at where your hormones sit and where your body is calm and undisrupted. And here's the thing, this number matters a lot more than any short-term spike because it reflects your body's baseline hormonal environment. It's how you feel day to day, your energy, mood, drive, libido, recovery ability. It's not about momentary highs, it's about where you live hormonally. So the big question is, does resistance training, especially squats, actually raise this basal testosterone level over time? To answer that, let's look at a study published in the journal Mechanisms of Aging and Development. This one's legit. It followed both young and older men over a structured 12-week resistance training program. They weren't just doing curls and cable machines. They were doing the big lifts, compound full body movements, designed to tax the system and promote adaptation. Researchers took two blood samples in two phases, once at the start of the program, week one, and again after 12 weeks of consistent training. They tested hormone levels before and after individual workouts to capture both the acute changes and long-term shifts. So what happened? Well, in week one, after their first proper lifting session, testosterone levels spiked, just like you'd expect an acute measurable rise in total testosterone shortly after training. That same spike was still present in week 12, so the bodies were still responding to the training stress, 
still triggering that short-term hormonal burst. But here's where it gets interesting. Despite the repeated spikes after each workout, the resting basal testosterone levels taken in the morning showed a slight decrease by the end of the 12 weeks. That's right, not an increase, a drop. Let that sink in. Even with consistent progressive resistant training and even with repeated post-workout testosterone spikes, the body did not sustain a high resting testosterone level. In fact, it did the opposite. So what gives? Well, this is where we start to see the body's regulatory intelligence kick in. It's always striving for homeostasis, balance. If you keep applying the same stressor over time, your body gets better at handling it. The initial alarm phase where testosterone surges in response to heavy squats starts to calm down. It's like your body saying, oh, this again, we've seen this before, no need to panic. That response, while less dramatic, is also more efficient. It suggests adaptation, but it also shows us something important. These short-term hormone spikes do not automatically translate into long-term increases. In some cases, especially if recovery isn't dialed in, basal testosterone can actually fall slightly. This could be due to several factors. Overtraining if volume or intensity is too high without enough rest. Undereating, especially low-fat or calorie-restricted diets. Poor sleep hygiene, which has a massive impact on hormone regulation chronic stress, elevated cortisol, blunts testosterone production. All these factors affect how the body interprets training stress. And while squats are an incredible exercise, they're also one of the most taxing. If you're not recovering well, that can send the opposite signal. Your body downregulates testosterone as a protective mechanism. So what's the real takeaway here? Squats do create a powerful anabolic environment in the moment. That post-lift testosterone spike is real, it's measurable and it can enhance recovery and adaptation. But, and this is crucial, it's temporary. Your body doesn't ride that wave all day. And over the course of weeks or months, unless your lifestyle pieces are in place, that testosterone response fades in importance. The training becomes less about the hormone spike and more about neural efficiency, muscle fiber recruitment and structural adaptation. Not even if you do them three times a week. The hormonal effect is short lived and unless it's paired with high quality sleep, smart recovery, sufficient calories, sunlight and low stress, the long-term benefit to testosterone just won't show up. Squats are a piece of the puzzle, but they're not the whole picture. But it gets more interesting in section three. Section three, is testosterone even the key driver of muscle growth? We tend to put testosterone on a pedestal. And yes, it's crucial for libido, energy, fat distribution, strength, and mood. But is it really the main driver of muscle growth? Let's look at two powerful studies. One from the Journal of Applied Physiology and the other from the European Journal of Applied Physiology. These studies wanted to understand the relationship between anabolic hormones and myofibrillar protein synthesis. That's the process where your muscle fibers actually repair and grow after training. Participants were experienced lifters, both men and women. After a workout, testosterone increased by four to five X in men. In women, no spike. Yet both groups showed identical increases in protein synthesis. Boom, this completely changes the narrative. Despite having completely different testosterone responses, both men and women built muscle at the same rate post training. So what does that tell us? It tells us that testosterone isn't the only factor and it might not even be the main one when it comes to muscle growth. It supports recovery, yes. It supports strength, yes. But the act of lifting itself, the tension placed on the muscle and the influx of amino acids seem to matter more. And here's where it gets even deeper. Muscle growth is heavily influenced by mTOR, the mammalian target of rapamycin. This is the body's anabolic on switch that gets flipped when you lift weights and eat protein. You can trigger mTOR without a massive testosterone spike. So yes, testosterone helps, but it's not the be all and end all. That said, if your testosterone is too low, you're in trouble. Cortisol rises, recovery tanks, libido disappears, energy drops. But for healthy active men, the difference between 600 nanograms per deciliter and 800 nanograms per deciliter might not matter as much as you think, and at least in terms of hypertrophy. So, are squats still worth it? Absolutely. Squats are still king when it comes to total body training. Even if the testosterone spike is temporary, it still stimulates your nervous system, activates mTOR and builds raw functional muscle. Let's summarize the three big takeaways from today. Free weight squats stimulate more testosterone than machines, but only for a short time. 
Squats don't raise your long-term testosterone levels even after 12 weeks of consistent training. Muscle growth doesn't depend on testosterone alone. You can build muscle without a big T-spike. What matters more is tension, volume, nutrition and recovery. But here's the thing, if your lifestyle is dialed in, quality sleep, proper recovery, smart programming, stress management, then squats become part of a powerful hormonal ecosystem that works in your favor. They're not a magic bullet, they're a weapon. And in that context, they're one of the best compound lifts you could possibly do. So keep squatting, but don't do it thinking it's going to give you a 200 point testosterone boost overnight. Do it because it's going to make you stronger, more resilient and better conditioned to handle the rest of your life. So if you're chasing optimal testosterone, here's what to remember. Prioritize compound lifts like squats, but also include deadlifts, pull-ups, rows and presses. Keep your rest periods short to maximize hormonal output. Train with moderate to heavy weight and high volume. Fuel your body with high quality protein and whole foods. Sleep like a savage. Hydrate like a monk. Recover like it's your job. Squats won't save your testosterone, but they will make you harder to kill. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. And if you've got ideas for future topics, drop them in the comments below. This is Testosterone Growth, and we're just getting started. I'll see you in the next one.